guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and on today's Stitchy Talk, we're going to talk all about needles. So the first Tuesday of every month, we talk about something different in cross-stitch, and so today we're going to focus on needles. And um, needles are really exciting, but it's kind of difficult to talk about, so um, let's just start talking about them. So when you cross-stitch, you're going to want to use a tapestry needle. So a tapestry needle is used for cross stitching and it has a very blunt end and it has a larger eye. And that makes it so that when you're stitching, you don't poke yourself and when you're threading, you don't um, fray the thread too much. You wanna use a needle that has a blunt end. Um, a tapestry needle is basically available in sizes ranging from 18 to 28 but the most common sizes are 24, 26, and 28. Now this is kind of confusing, but when you look at the needle size, the smaller the number, the smaller the number, the bigger the needle. So 24 is going to have your largest eye. So it's gonna be the biggest needle. So it's gonna have a large eye, it's probably gonna be a little bit longer, and it's gonna be less sharp at the end. So this is the easiest to thread. And with the size 24, you can actually thread up to six strands. Size 26 is your most commonly used needle. This is the size that I use pretty much 99% of the time. So size 26, if you're just starting out, is gonna be what you wanna get. Now size 28 is your smallest, so the eye is gonna be really small, it's gonna be harder to thread. So this one's really common if you're using one strand. So if you're doing like a higher count or fewer threads, you would wanna use this. So in summary, 24 is your biggest needle, 28 is your smallest needle, 26 is what you're gonna to wanna to use most of the time. Now you're gonna pick your needle size based on what you're stitching on. So for size 24, we recommend that to be used on 10 count or seven count or really big fabrics. Size 26, we recommend using on 14 count Ada, 28 count even weave, or even 16 and 32 count. Size 28, we would recommend using on your really small counts, like 18 count, 36 count, 20 count, 40 count. Now I want you to remember that at the Fat Quarter Shop website, we have a cross stitch calculator. Now if you fill that out, that's gonna give you a recommended needle to use. So you could always go there if you can't remember where you find this video. Now if your needle size is too big for your fabric, so if you're using like this needle on a really small fabric, you're gonna stretch the whole of your fabric. If your needle is too small, it's gonna fall through the fabric holes easily. So choosing your needle is um, pretty important, but I would also say, just like everything else in crafting, choosing your needle is a personal preference. So there might be a time that I would use a size 26, but maybe Cheryl would use a size 28. And that's okay, do whatever works for you. Everything we just gave you was just recommendation, but you would do whatever works best for you. Um, now, one tip is that if, when you're threading your needle, if you're trying to thread it and it's not, the thread's just not going through your needle, try the other side. Because due to the how the needle is stamped, there is a right side and a wrong side of the needle. Now, looking at it, you would never be able to tell what it is. So if you're ever threading your needle and you can't get the thread in, just try the other side. So that is all about the sizes of needles. Now we're gonna talk about different brands. And, um, you know, this is kind of one of those things that it's kind of boring to talk about because with needles, you really have to have the needle in your hand. You have to try it, see what works best for you. So we're gonna kind of start with the least expensive and then move up. So the least expensive brand is DMC. They are the easiest to find and they're budget friendly. So you could find these at craft stores, um, online stores, but this is, if you're just starting, this is what I would recommend because it's not a very big investment. 
Um, once you become an experienced stitcher, you might want to invest in a different brand, but this is where I would start. DMC is packaged in England and the needles are made in China. And again, they're available in size 24, 26, and 28. And um, most of them are nickel plated. There are some that are gold plated. Um, these are less durable. So if you're gonna use this needle, I would recommend switching out your needle with each project. Now I did wanna show you also with DMC, they sell a DMC special collector's needle tin. And I love the tin. But it has an assortment of needles. So it has size 24 in the nickel, size 26 in the gold, size 22 and size 18 to 22. Now these would be really hard to use on cross stitch, but maybe if you're working on a kid project or something with canvas, that's be what you could use. Also in the tin is another set of 24 nickel, 24 gold, and then there are um, sizes 135, 789, and I'm not exactly sure what you use these for. I think, yeah, these are embroidery, so not so much cross stitch, but this is a great way to just, you know, you could just try each different one and see which one works for you. Now, obviously these would be harder to use. These might be harder to use, but this is just something that I think is really um, kind of cool because I like the, the tin. So you can buy the DMC separately or in a tin. And like I said, you can find these needles at most places. So that is our first brand we wanna talk about. And please put your questions in. I will answer them at the end. The second brand is John James. Uh, John James needles have a strong eye and they can last through several projects. These are about the same price as DMC. So they're comparable in price to DMC. Um, they do, it's similar to DMC where they have the nickel plated or they have the gold plated. So the gold plated is more of a luxury needle in that line. So in that you obviously get fewer needles because they're worth more. The gold plating allows the tapestry needle to slip through the fabric with ease, resulting in less friction. John Jane needles are made in England. They come in size 24, 26, and 28, and also the gold plated come in 24 and 26. And um, there is also 28, it's hard to come by. And then another thing I wanted to mention is they used to make John James petite needles but they're discontinued and I haven't been able to find a source for them, but those at one time were super popular. Now these, I would say, um, you might be able to find these in a uh, needlework store, you might not. I would say it's kind of a in-between brand. And I've used them, I do like the petite needles. I, they, they do bend though. I would say these, um, tend to bend a little bit. So that's John James and they come packaged in a yellow brand. The next brand is Bowen and this is one of my favorite brands. Now Bowen needles are made in France. They are a premium brand and they are much more expensive. You can easily find these in needle workshops. You wouldn't be able to find this like at a discount store though. Now these, if you look at these, these have a much smaller eye than all of the other brands. So they're harder to thread, but they really glide through your fabrics because that needle is so thin. They're available in size 24, 26, and 28, and I love the Bowen brand. So just an FYI, and I'm gonna kind of tell you the brands I like, and then the brands Cheryl likes, and Kind of that same thing is everyone likes something different. So that's Bowen. Now Tulip is a brand that is more known in the quilting industry. So it's not as known in the, cro in the cross stitch industry, so it might be harder to find in a needlework store. Now these needles 
are opposite of Bowen and that their eye is very big compared to Bowen. So they are much easier to thread, but you know, they're not gonna glide as easily through. The needles are all plated with nickel, but the eye is plated with gold. They're made in Japan, and this brand comes in size 24 and 25. They don't have a size 26, but their 25 is equivalent to the size 26. Um, and they come in tubes. Take this little paper out, but they come in these little tubes, so they're easy to um, store. So that's tulip. Now, those are kind of the beginner needles, you know, basic needles. Now, everyone I know loves Pat Carson needles. They were uh, manufactured by Yarn Tree, and they were discontinued. And when they were discontinued, we had a lot of requests on what needle uh, brand to replace them with. So here are some that we added to Fat Quarter Shop after the Pat Carson were discontinued. Now, obviously, Pat Carson is the ultimate brand. I love them, um, but they are discontinued, and I cannot, as a company, buy those. Those are owned by Yarn Tree, so if they're ever reproduced, they would be reproduced by the company Yarn Tree. So one of the first companies that were recommended was Edmar. They also come in tubes and there are four needles per tube. They come in size 24, 26, and 28. They have a gold eye. They are easy to thread and these are actually Cheryl's new favorite needles. They are sturdy but smooth, affordable, and made in Japan. I think I might have said that wrong. There's four per pack. Yeah, there's one more in here. So there's four that come in each pack. So these are something that I would say would be, Cheryl thinks are most comparable to Pat Carson's. And um, very simple because there's just three needles and four come in each. So this is the Edmar needles. And we started carrying these recently. I will say they're selling really well. Another brand that was recommended to us was Mary Arden. Now these are nickel plated, so there's no gold on them. They're available in size 24, 26, 28, and then there's a pack of 24 versus 26. These are made in England and they are found in a lot of needlework shops. Now the next brand is one that was recommended and I actually really like it. It's called White Croft Heritage Needles. Now these are really hard for us to get. They come from England, but they're very, very inexpensive. So I actually really like them. They're available in sizes 18, 24, or size 26. So I've been using um, the size 24 and the size uh, 26. And I, um, I guess I'm mostly using the size 26, but I really like them. They do bend, but they're also very inexpensive. So it's kind of like a DMC needle where you would need to replace it over and over. They do not make a size 28, because that is the question that we get uh, quite a bit. And these are just nickel, there's no gold or anything. So this is a new brand that I do like. Now there are some additional brands. This is Peacemakers available in 24, 26, and 28, also made in Japan. And um, on the back of the packaging, it does break down what needle is best to use with your project. So it's got information on doll making, hand applique, Milner, sharps, tapestry, that kind of thing. So that's kind of fun just to have. So this is a brand um, that's also very popular and it comes in the nickel. Plated. Another brand is called Sullivan's. This is also a company that is really well known in the quilting industry versus the cross stitch industry. These come in packages of two ball tip needles. They're size 24, 
26 and 28. And so, at the bottom of the needle, it's like a little ball tip. So see how it indents? And so that is meant so that when you push it in the thread, it's easier to catch. Some people like these needles. Um, I've tried them and I, I think that they would just take a while to get used to, but they come in size 24, 26, and 28. They're a nickel plated and they're tarnish free, 100% silver coated cast stainless steel and they're made in Germany. So that is kind of like a big summary of all the needles we carry at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about next is accessories. And these are, you know, it's an accessory. It's not a, it's not a have to have. So let's talk about needle threaders. So we just picked three needle threaders that have been popular for us. So if you're beginning and you're having issues starting um, to thread your needle, or if you can't see the eye, you can always use a needle threader. So we picked three brands. DMC is um, this one you can thread like a smaller needle, a larger needle, or any needle. This is probably the side I would use for cross stitch. It's inexpensive, you can find it um, in most places. Now the Clover we picked because this one gets a lot of really great reviews and Pat Sloan loves it. This one you push, um, the needle threader through. Let me see if I can take it off. Let me see if I can show you how you do it. With a needle. Do I have a needle? Oh, we just have about a hundred. So this one you actually put through the needle hole. Like that. You put your thread in and you pull it through. And it does not, um, I've used this before and it does not um, tag or pull at your thread. That's what y'all would be careful with when you're using a needle threader is that you wouldn't want something that's gonna like, kind of strip at your, at your thread. Another brand, Loran, is very popular in the cross stitch industry and it's similar to this one and then you can do like a small end or a big end and it's the same thing you can see you put the needle over, you thread it, and then you pull it back. So those are things that can help with threading your needle. Another thing that I recommend is a needle case. And there are so many needle cases on the market. One of the big questions that I get is how do you keep your needles separate? So what I do is I have a size 24, a size 26 and a 28 and I just have stickers on the back and I just put my needles in there and there is really honestly no way to tell the difference in brands or anything like that. You'd have to come up with kind of a system to know but this is the way that I keep my needles. I basically will just once say I'm using Pat Carson when I was using Pat Carson I would just open it and I would just put all of my needles on here. There aren't any in here right now but this is a magnet and I would just put them all on there. And then as one of the questions we have is how do you know when a needle's done? Well, when it's sticky or it's bent or it's just not going through the thread, then I would just throw it away. But I, would, I keep them in here until they're done. And the only way I know to keep them apart is to sticker them. So these are some needle cases. And then needle minders, they add flair to your cross stitch. So we just picked a bunch because we have, we probably have a hundred needle minders that we sell. Um, but what you do is you can put your needle minder on your fabric and you put the magnet on the back. Or what I do is I actually put it on my design board and then my needles, I stick them in the board and they can go right here. And I cannot tell you how many times I've stuck the needle through the design board and then it just disappears forever because that has happened plenty of times. But this is, um, this is a really fun way to, you could decorate, um, you could put this on, say you have a coffee mug that you're using, you could stick it to your coffee mug. You could put it on a, 
on a design board. You could put it on your fabric. I tend to not put it on my fabric because it weighs it down. So here are just some different needle minders. These are uh, by Lori Holt. This one's a Fat Quarter Shop. And these two are uh, Bev McCullough from Flamingo Toes. So those are our uh, Lori's and Bev's are our best selling. So that's all about needles. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you join me next month on July 11th when we talk all about cross-stitch patterns and different tips on working and reading cross-stitch patterns and the different type of patterns. Now you will notice our dates are a little bit off. Um, I am about to start doing college tours with one of my children and so the dates for the summer are gonna be way off. I'm just uh, letting you know in advance and I have a lot of things uh, kind of all over the place. So that will be why. And I'm going to start answering questions. I'm going to first answer the questions that came in before the live stream. The first one is, what is the difference between a tapestry needle and an embroidery needle? So a tapestry needle is more blunt. You're less likely to poke through your finger. An embroidery needle is more sharp because it goes through like more of a quilting fabric rather than a hole and it is gonna be sharper and it will kind of uh, hurt your finger a little bit more. The closest needle available to Pat Carson is Ed Marr, and that's a sh from Cheryl. What is the difference between the types of needles? Sharps, betweens, tapestry, chenille, milners, etc. So today we're just talking about tapestry needles. Um, you can look on the back of that uh, peacemakers to kind of see that difference but I didn't want to go in detail on that because I think it would overcomplicate everything and a lot of those needles are used for quilting so we can maybe do that on a different video um, I miss Pat Carson can fat quarter shop buy the rights to produce them we can't but yarn tree has the right so hopefully they will bring them back in the future how do I know when a needle's life is over so for me it's usually when it's sticky now what you can use is you can use alcohol and just put it on a cotton ball and wipe it down or if it's bent rusty or just isn't going through the fabric nicely is when it's over okay diana good asks i would like to know if all the same size needles are the same size are all size 24 the same and all size 25 the same so that part of the question, no, they're not all the same. So they will have, each brand has a different thickness of the eye, a different thickness of the tip. They might also be different lengths. Some are longer, some are shorter, some are thinner. So they're all different. And how do you size needles to get them organized with like sizes? So I use the, um, what are those called that I just said? magnetic needle cases and I usually just I usually just stick with one brand at a time so I'm either using Bowen or um, Pat Carson and I can I can just visually tell the difference but I keep them all in those magnetic needle cases is there a difference in brand yes so each brand is a different price um, and the more expensive the finer the needle and the longer the needle will last the 28 Petite, we don't carry, and they're kind of, um, I did a big search for them yesterday, and they're, I don't know if the company has discontinued them, but they're just not available at the uh, places that we wholesale our items from. Do I carry all the brands? Well, we carry all the brands I just showed you, yes. Plus, we even carry a couple more. Um, but yes, any brand that has been recommended to us, we do carry. I hope Kimberly talks about needle threaders and what to look for. Some don't seem to last very long. Yes, so that Clover is the best one. It is, um, I've used it for uh, quilting also with when I'm doing binding on a quilt, but yes, those are, that's the one that I would recommend the most. I find Bowen to be sharper, do you? Yes, absolutely. So Bowen is skinnier, sharper, and it is harder to thread but I like that the needle is so thin. So because the needle is so thin, it's gonna go through your fabric easier, but it is gonna poke you. Does Cheryl think Edmar is as easy to thread as Pat Carson? 
or does she like how it glides through the fabric? Both. Which, in your opinion, are the least bendy? I must have a grip like a boa constrictor because I can use a needle for five minutes and it will have a bend. So I would say bow and bends because it is thin. I would try Ed Marr or Mary Arden. Is there a way to tell which size once you've taken it out of the package? Honestly, no. Um, so that's kind of the hardest thing about needles is you kind of, if you're using like two brands, you can kind of tell the difference. If you start mixing them, I think it's just hard to tell a difference but there isn't a magic um, tip to that. What you could always do is keep it in the package and just keep the package with you and then just put it back in the package. That would be the only way that I could think of. What about the Black Pony brand? I think we do have that, we'll check on it. Um, that one is harder for us to get, but I do believe um, it's, oh, it's out of stock right now. We do carry it and we, but when we put it on order, it just takes a long time for it to come in. Are Zappy Dots needle minders still made? Seem hard to find. Yes, they are. And you know what? They sell direct. I think if you search Zappy Dots or Happy Dots, um, you would be able to find them. Do I sell tail tuckers? I think we do. And um, that is something where you put it through the your, la your ending stitches and your tail sticks out, you put your thread in and you pull. So I do think we do, if not, we'll add them. What brand will not bend as easily, Edmar and Mary Arden? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out each brand just so you can kind of see them and then we'll zoom in and then you can maybe see. They all have a different size eye, a different tip, a different length, a different everything. So we'll just put, a, we'll put the 26s out. So, so, you know, DMC, they're thin. John James has the nickel and the gold in 26. So you can kind of tell the difference in the length. Bowen. And see how thin those needles are, but I love them because they glide through the fabric. Sorry, we have to open packages. This is kind of me going impromptu. Now these John James, tap, tulip, I mean, they're about the same length. I just wanted to kind of see the length. And then these are Edmar. And so you can see that has a really big eye and it's easy to thread. And it is about the same length, maybe a tiny bit shorter. Mary Arden. Can we zoom out a tiny, tiny bit? There we go. And then the white, the Heritage White Croft. These are really easy to thread, but again, they're less expensive. Um, so they don't last as long, but I like them. Peacemakers seem longer. And then the Sullivan's um, is kind of a specialty. So that's kind of how they look. And so just looking at them, you know, you can see some are longer, some are skinnier, some have bigger eyes, they're easier to thread. It's really all personal preference. So thank you so much for joining me today to talk all about tapestry cross stitch needles. Any questions you have, put them in the comment box. Um, I love to read them and we'll answer all the questions that come in. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.